check this out. We've got something really fun today. This is so amazing. Math and math. Oh man, again? 6.3, proving identities. When we prove an identity, we want to manipulate both sides or just one side of an equation to make it look the same algebraically. No crossing over is allowed. And we have to do it algebraically because there's no other way we can prove it. So we need to get to a state where the left side is equal to the right side. Now, if a question does say verify, that means we want to try a value, plug a value in for the variable and see if they're equal. Of course, this doesn't work as a proof. So if it works, it doesn't prove anything. If it doesn't work, at least it proves that it's not an identity. So we can just skip to the end. So let's try the example one here. Verify using pi over four. We got one minus sine squared pi over four equals sine pi over four cos pi over four and tan pi over four. Now, sine pi over 4 is just root 2 over 2 and that would be squared and on this side we got sine pi over 4 again so root 2 over 2 cos pi over 4 so root 2 over 2 and tan pi over 4 is just 1 so here we got 1 minus this is 2 over 4 so, or 1 half and this one is 2 over 4 Okay, so we've got one minus a half equals a half. That means that a half equals a half. So by verifying using pi over four, this looks like a good identity. Let's actually prove it now. So proving it, we wanna use the identities that we've done in the last couple of sections. So we look at one minus sine squared x and it looks like our Pythagorean identity rearranged. All right, so that would be cos squared x plus sine squared x equals one. If I just move the sine squared over, then I'm gonna be left with cos squared. So this left side here, I can use this identity, sub out the one minus sine squared x for cos squared x. This side here, sine x and cos x, they're already fine. They're in a basic state. However, tan x can be broken into sine x over cos x. Now we see cos x can cancel, numerator and denominator on the right side, and we have cos squared x equals sine squared x. And this isn't true. This is just not true. Co starts at a maximum, sine starts at midline going up, and these are not true. So this is not an identity. So even though it seemed to verify using pi over four, that must have just been a lucky spot where the two sides were equal. This really isn't an identity. When we are proving identities, there's no strict procedure to follow because each question is a bit different. But here are some strategies. Keep each side on each side. So I mentioned that already, no crossing over. So in this case, no multiplying by sine 2x on both sides to get rid of it in the denominator. Got to keep it on the side that it started on. Recognize parts of the equation with known identities. This is sine's double angle, so I can use the double angle identity to get rid of that. Get rid of double angles. Generally, you want to do this and break it down into sine and cos. Uh, there, were, there was one identity proof that I found that you actually create double, identity, double angle identities and, and use those, but generally we wanna get rid of them and go to from complicated to simple. And last is have fun. All right, let's take a look at this one. We've got tan x, that can be broken into sine x over cos x. This uh, cos has a double angle identity and on our formula sheet we've got three of these to choose from. 
So I'm going to choose the one that has a 1. Uh, that way I can cancel with this one here. So 1 minus 2 sine squared x all over. I'm going to get rid of sine's double angle here. It only has one identity to do that, so 2 sine x cos x. This side looks fine. I'll leave this side and I'll try to make the right side look like this. Now we've got 1 minus 1, that's gone, and we've got negative and negative, so this is now positive, so 2 sine squared x all over 2 sine x cos x. And if things are looking good, we can get rid of the 2. We can get rid of one sign in the numerator with one sign in the denominator. And that leaves us with one sign in the numerator, one cos in the denominator. So we have the left side is equal to the right side. Now, some of you might be worried about this cos's double angle identity because it has three to choose from on the formula sheet. All three of them will work. Some of them will work quicker than others though, and knowing which one to use just comes with practice. So a fun thing to do would be trying all three of them off the formula sheet and getting to the same final answer here. Okay, let's find the non-permissible values for each side. So for this side, cos is in the denominator, so cos cannot equal zero. And cos equals zero on the y-axis, so that would be when we have an angle of pi over two plus pi n, where n is an integer. On the right side, we have both sine and cos in the denominator. So that means all our quadrantal angles all the x, all the angles where it's on the x-axis and the y-axis. So we've got cos x cannot equal zero, sine x cannot equal zero. So this would be x cannot equal pi over two n, where n is an integer. Now you see that the non-permissible values are different for each side, and that's okay. For an identity, they just need to be equal for all the permissible values of the variable. And for the non-permissible values of the variable, they can be different. Example three, we want to prove this, and we have one minus cos x here, and one plus cos x here, and sin x and sin x. Everything is really in a basic form. And we don't have one minus cos x anywhere on our formula sheet for our identities. We do have one minus cos x squared. Hmm. Let's create that. So on the left side here, let's multiply by the conjugate. So one plus cos x. Now, since we did that for the numerator, we will have to do that in the denominator as well. I'm going to leave the right side. Now, when I multiply the numerator in here on the left, I'm going to get 1 plus, I'll show you those steps, cos x minus cos x minus cos squared x. Okay, so that's it all multiplied out. You probably could shortcut that because the, this is a difference of perfect squares, and so this, the middle terms cancel here. Not going to do anything. Don't multiply in in the denominator. Generally, if things are factored, that's the way we would want them. Now, in the numerator, I have 1 minus cos squared x, and in the denominator, sine x, 1 plus cos squared x, cos x, and on this side, sine x, 1 plus cos x. Now, this right here looks like my Pythagorean identity rearranged. So I'm going to replace that with sine squared x. 
Remember our Pythagorean identity was cos squared x plus sine squared x equals 1. And I rearranged it, so minus cos squared x on both sides. And this is what I'm using here to replace, replace this numerator. Now I can cancel out one of the signs. So this sign from the numerator, this one from the denominator, and I'm left with uh, the same thing on both sides. So mission accomplished. Proved that this is an identity. Left side is equal to the right side. If you're not already doing this, pause the video and try the example before I go through it. The formula sheet that I keep referring to is under the content section. It's the same formula sheet that we'll be using for the diploma exam. Now for example, four and five, for some reason I pre-typed it out. So here is a potential solution. So for the first one, I factored out one over cos x, which is factoring out the secant x here. And also on the left side, multiplying by the conjugate using the trick that we did in the last slide. Now on the left here, we got one minus sine squared that can be exchanged for cos squared here. On the right side, we can rearrange this and put the denominator up here with the denominator down here. Okay, so we get cos squared. And once we do that, we have proved it, left side equals right side. That's not the only way to do it. So I also typed out an alternate solution, kind of similar, but a bit different. We still factor out the secant here. Then we get the cos squared, so the denominator with the other denominator. So I haven't done anything to the left side here in this approach. And once I got cos squared, I'm gonna use the Pythagorean identity and replace that with one minus sine squared x. From there, I'm gonna factor that because that's a difference of perfect squares. So it's one plus sine x and one minus sine x. And then I see I have a common factor, numerator and denominator, I can cancel. And I get left side is equal to right side. Completely different from what I did above. I ended up in a different spot. And in this approach, I never even touched the left side. And that's perfectly fine. So I hope you think up an even different way. Example five. I also typed this one out. This one's got some factoring. So I got rid of the double angle in the numerator here and in the denominator. I also got rid of cotan and cosecant by using their reciprocal identities. Now I see I have a common denominator here on the left side, so I can put this together and make one fraction, one rational expression here and I'm gonna keep that because that looks like a good place to try to get the right side too. On the right side here, this, as crazy as it is, is a trigonometric quadratic here. So I'm gonna factor it like I would a quadratic. You can sub out the cos x with a different value like a to see the quadratic better and factor it easier. Here I just factored it, leaving the cos x in there. I factored it. I factored sine x out of the denominator, I found my common factor here, cancelled it out, and I'm left with left side equals the right side. So it's proved. This is part of trigonometry six, proving trigonometric identities using all of those identities that we've gone over. Hopefully you can prove identities now and also use the strategies of conjugates and factoring to help you with that. Here's some questions. Give them a try, see if you know what you're doing.